Martin. Martin Turbolowski is the founder and investor of Bumi Vata Technology. Uh, Martin's lived in Asia for more than 25 years, mainly in to Tokyo and Hong Kong, where he's held various positions in financial markets, private banking, family offices, and the hedge fund space. He set up his own venture capital business in Singapore in late 2016. You can hear all about his opinions on venture capital on his LinkedIn account. Do see after. Martin moved to Indonesia uh, in 2018 to focus on his current investment, Bumi Vata Technology. Uh, he'll tell us a little bit about that. Uh, and Martin, I, I, I hope really in your role as trigger speaker that you'll trigger a conversation around the emerging technology that you're bringing with Bumi Vata and what that's going to do, perhaps not so much to disrupt the space, though it will be a disruptor, but also to change and help in the acceleration of the digital space in Indonesia. Martin Topolowski. Right. So, um, first of all, um, we're a lot smaller than HSBC. So, I'll um, explain briefly what we do for those who don't know. We provide location analytics software for the government and also for private sector businesses so they can make better business decisions. <clears throat> so, we have been using machine learning to do predictions um, for companies like McDonald's, um, XXI Cinema, Kraft Heinz, so they can make savings on their business development costs, they can make savings on the logistics costs. This is a proven concept elsewhere, but still quite new to Indonesia. Um, yeah, we, I think we're by far the biggest in this space with um, around 150 employees. But um, it's interesting what some of the guys say. I think education is going to be key. There is still, from our perspective, there is still, I believe, there's a lot of reliance still in Indonesia on outdated business processes. And there is, I think everywhere there's concern about how technology may affect jobs. But I think maybe here it's, it's more significant, especially in the BUMN sector where people, I think, you know, there's, there's so many people in jobs there, um, which may be affected by our software and by AI, um, where people need to upskill and start doing different things, not, not see this as a threat, but as, as, as um, Dr. Navi mentioned, upskilling, upskilling the people who are already maybe older. Because often I have to have meetings with people who've been working in, in BUMN for the last 30 years, and they really don't really have much interest in what I have to say, because they, they basically see this as, yeah, but we've done without this until now. Um, you know, what benefit is this to me? Is this going to affect, am I going to get a promotion if I introduce this? Or am I going to get people knocking on my door saying, how can I not make the money I used to make effectively? So there is a challenge in introducing deep technology to Indonesia. And I think also there's a, Indonesian people need to be more confident of their own abilities when it's making technology. Now, when we went to introduce our, tel our technology to Telkom Cell Sigma, they were like, oh, we don't deal with Indonesian made technology. We, we only deal with the, the big foreign firms when they're introducing. Now, we now have contracts with some of the system integrators here, but it was very complicated at first. They rather stick to what they know. So how can Indonesia develop making their own software? You know, you look at India and China, they used to import everything from the United States. Now we have Infosys, we have multiple Chinese companies, Tata, all these multinational companies. And as Indonesia becomes bigger globally, they're going to have to also adopt. So I think the opportunity here is absolutely huge. We know the size of the population. Um, but even if we look at uh, 2045 and the economy becoming the fourth biggest in the world, for that wealth to be spread out more and to lift people up in society, they, I think technology is the best way to do that. So the main thing here is getting the main stakeholders to buy in, the government, um, the various organizations. We have, um, we have many events like this, which we get to talk to people. We had an event recently with them. Um, Dr. Anis, and there's various other events where we get to point out what we're trying to do. But I still think, yeah, the biggest challenge here is the still reliance on outdated business processes. But I think the opportunity is that before we can do, we can drive the revenue of businesses. So 
people should see this as an opportunity because if you have all the data to hand and that data is an understandable way so we have live telco data we have data for um, we collect our own point of interest data so talk along tongue we collect data from all um, the national statistics Doug chapel and we put this all in one piece of software which will, will then make predictions based on that using AI effectively the companies using that type of thing can increase their revenue significantly and can increase create new jobs so I think changing the whole outlook to ensure that people don't see technology as a threat but see technology as a massive opportunity and at the end of the day we you know in the UK in the old days everyone even when I first started work we had a typist right now I think I heard, um, I think it might have been Sashin who said this at an early event. We don't have typists anymore, but we don't have mass unemployment. We have people of upskill and now do different things. Um, and I think the younger generation is certainly buying into that. We have a lot of relationships with UGM and, and ITB and things. But yet getting the, the buy-in from the, the decision makers, um, particularly in the government sector, I think is the biggest challenge. The private sector, it's a lot easier, obviously, because they can look at the, the black and white. How much revenue am I going to increase by using AI to make predictions instead of having people going around counting people? Because still the system being used here for making business decisions by a lot of the big corporates is very analog still. People going around with a pen and paper, making notes, what they think of this. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of change that can be made very simply. I was yesterday meeting with the... Uh, the head of the Indonesian Real Estate Association. They have, uh, I think, 6,000 developers. And still a lot of it's analog. Still a lot of, he's trying to introduce new software. He's a young guy. Obviously, he's got connections, family connections, but he's a young guy trying to introduce something completely new, technology, trying to introduce our software to this group. And he gets pushback. He gets like, well, you know, this is not how we do things. So. That, that's, I think that's the biggest challenge, that upskilling is, is very important, but the opportunity for increasing revenues of individual companies is very, very high by just using better technology. I mean, just being able to make predictions based on data rather than just effectively using a, you know, Feng Shui or something, which has been, has been used quite a lot in Indonesia in the past to make business decisions. I talk to senior guys here and they tell me that's what they do. So. But if you look at history and even the big corporates, they, they, they make a lot of mistakes because they, the way they have done it in the past. Um, they've been very driven by agents maybe when they're making decisions of where to put new branches, the banks even, you know, BCA. And they've been Asian driven, but to be driven by their own data and, and being able to make decisions, I think is going to obviously increase their revenue and increase their opportunities, especially in the second and third cities where people just don't have the information. So yeah, I think, that's, I think that's basically my point, that it's, it's a huge opportunity, can increase revenue across the board for most corporates and the government. Simply, BUMN could increase its revenue dramatically, plus they can monetize a lot of the data they have. So there's a great, like what we've done with BPN. So there's a lot of opportunity there, but still the stakeholders need to buy in to this because there is some pushback still, to be honest. Martin Tavolowski, thank you very much for the perspective from uh, Bumi Vata. Uh, I think you've highlighted now in, in, in following on from, from James HSBC